in a world where the boundaries between reality and the uncanny blur, where the unexplainable often takes center stage, we find ourselves in the nexus of truth and imagination. Can you discern the fine lines separating the verifiable from the surreal? To decode the two case files that lie before us, one must unravel the tapestry of their own experiences and embrace the inexplicable that challenges our understanding. Welcome to a journey that transcends the ordinary, where the extraordinary beckons you to venture forth in Beyond the Files. Hosted by Curator M. Truth and illusion often work side by side. Take this picture for example. Can you spot the hidden tiger? Again, two case file stories, and your job is to tell which is true and which is fake. The stories will test you, so be ready, because the truth can appear right in front of your eyes. Ever stayed in a hotel before? It's the most convenient way of stopping in the middle of your long journey and getting a good night's rest. Also, a nice change in scenery from the bullshit and stress of everyday life. Me, Anthony, for example, looking forward to space camp, he ends up arriving a day early just to check it out. But unfortunately, it was closed for the day. And it won't open until tomorrow. Fucking idiot. He has no choice but to stay at a nearby hotel for the night. Upon checking in, he is not ready for what's about to come for him at night. In a bustling city, there stood a modern hotel building that concealed a sinister secret within its sleek walls. When a man named Anthony checked into one of its rooms, he couldn't shake off the feeling that something was off from the moment he arrived. The night he checked in, he encountered a lady at the front desk. Her eyes shadowed with an eerie intensity. Your keys. Her voice, soft yet chilling, sent shivers down his spine as she handed him the keys to his hotel room. As he entered the elevator, he turned around and rested his back against the back wall. As he waited for the elevator doors to close, there was an awkward yet eerie silence. Right in front of him from a far distance was the lady behind the desk staring at him. Anthony started to feel very uncomfortable and was wondering how long she had been staring at him. Shifting his focus to the ceiling above to break the awkwardness, the doors began to close. Oh, thank God, Anthony whispered. As the doors were halfway closed, Anthony looked down. Right in front of the elevator doors was the lady, who was now closer to him, and who continued to give him a disturbing look until the doors fully closed in front of her face. He brushed this off as maybe she was playing a prank or a social media dare or whatever. He was tired and didn't care. He just wanted to get a good night's sleep. Later that night, as night fell and the city's sounds dwindled, Anthony started hearing a faint, eerie voice seeping through the vents. The voice belonged to a woman, her words filled with sorrow and longing. It echoed through his hotel room, weaving its way into his dreams and leaving him restless and anxious. Determined to uncover the truth, Anthony began investigating the hotel building's history. His research revealed a tale of a family who once checked into the same room Anthony was staying in years ago. It was said that one night, the mother by the name of Eleanor had gone mad when she found out that her husband had been cheating on her and the life he created for another woman. When the husband stormed out of their hotel room, Eleanor drank her life away that night, looking at her kids knowing that their half their father disgusted her. She ended up drowning her kids in the bathtub. Feeling guilty and sorry for what she has done, she committed suicide afterward in that very same room. Fueled by curiosity, Anthony delved deeper, 
He took the elevator downstairs and decided to find the front desk lady and ask her questions about the building and what had happened to the family. His heart beating fast as it reached the lower level. When the door opened, he was welcomed with a sight of an empty front desk and creepy dimmed lights. There was no sight of the front desk lady and wondered if she had gone home for the night. As he looked behind the front desk, there was a door in the back that was slightly open. He noticed that there were sounds of repetitive whispers and ominous flickering lights. His heart and anxiety rising, he decides to walk over to the back and open the door which leads him to a basement. Slowly, he crept down each stair as the whispers became louder and the lights grew brighter. When he was halfway down, he peeked and his heart skipped a beat. A shocking sight of the front desk lady kneeling in front of a small altar. The altar had many lit black candles and a weird black symbol drawing on the wall. There was also a twin-size bed and a small kitchen, which Anthony didn't know that she lived on site in the hotel building. Shocked and confused, Anthony was trying to process all of this. He heard the front desk lady having a conversation with someone and at the same time speaking in Latin. Frightened to the core, Anthony wanted to record this as evidence. Trying to make less noise, he switches his attention to his cell phone and slowly grabs it from his back pocket. As he aims his cell phone at the front desk lady talking to herself, he opens the camera app. When it finally opens, the lady suddenly appears in front of the camera with the same disturbing stare she gave him. My kids, my children, why did you leave us? Said the front desk lady, but it wasn't her own voice. It was much of an older woman. With a loud scream, the room plunged into darkness. The next morning, the people staying at the hotel woke up to a dead body at the pool. Police arrived and discovered it was Anthony's body. The only surveillance camera evidence they have shows Anthony slowly walking to the pool and drowning himself. Is Anthony really going crazy? Was it all in his head? Then how do you explain the front desk lady's weird behavior? Is she obsessed with the haunting history of the building? That she turned to rituals to summon something or someone? How do you explain the surveillance camera catching Anthony drowning himself? Maybe Anthony had personal mental problems nobody knew about. Did this story come from my writer imagination? Or are you ready to check out? Here's a sneak peek for one of the case file stories in the next episode. Two cleaning servants for a rich family discovers their daughter is the true definition of evil on Beyond the Files. Take a look at this chair. A normal chair that is simply made out of oak. Many old antique artifacts hold a lot of memories and history as they are passed down from generation to generation. Me, Richard, a rich businessman and a collector of rare artifacts who stumbles upon a mysterious chair. What he's about to find out will send him down a terrifying path. In the dim corners of a forgotten antique shop, hidden among relics of the past, there sat a chair with a dark and ominous aura. For years, it had remained untouched since it was sitting on top of a tall closet, its history veiled in mystery. Until one day, a wealthy businessman and collector named Richard stumbled upon it, drawn to its eerie allure like a moth to a flame. He wondered why a simple chair was on top of a closet. Unaware of the sinister past that shrouded the chair, Richard purchased it, intending to add it to his collection of antique artifacts. As the chair found its new home in his opulent mansion, an unsettling energy seemed to seep into the air. The room in which it resided grew colder, the shadows deeper, and an inexplicable sense of dread settled upon anyone who entered. One day, a transporter worker dropped another antique artifact for Richard. Richard was busy with a call, so he decided to set it down in the collector's room. Suddenly, his eyes were drawn to the chair. Feeling tired, he decided to sit in it and rest until Richard was done with his call. When he sat down to finally relax, he felt a sense of depression and overwhelming dread. <clears throat> Richard was trying to get his attention as he ended his call. Feeling sorry for sitting down on the chair, the worker didn't know it was one of his antique artifacts. 
Over the course of the week, Richard's transporter worker died from an unknown cause. Richard wanted more information about the chair and gave the task to his assistant. Late one night and drunk curiosity getting the better of him, Richard decided to sit in the chair. As he settled into its hard oak surface, an icy chill coursed through his veins. The room seemed to pulsate with malevolence, and Richard felt an overwhelming sense of unease. That night, Richard's dreams were plagued by nightmarish visions, scenes of war, despair, and darkness. He awoke drenched in sweat, haunted by the horrors he had witnessed in his sleep. Convinced that it was merely his imagination running wild, he brushed off the experience. However, as the days passed, Richard's demeanor began to change. He grew increasingly paranoid, his once sharp mind clouded by irrational fears. He started to withdraw from the world, his wealth and success slipping through his fingers like sand. Friends and family watched in concern as he deteriorated, unable to comprehend the inexplicable transformation. Desperate for answers, Richard's assistant came back with news and the history about the chair, uncovering a chilling truth. The chair had been used by Hitler himself before his fall in World War II. Legend has it that the chair was cursed by gypsies, bringing misfortune and despair to anyone who dared to sit in it. Realizing the gravity of his situation, Richard late at night attempted to rid himself of the cursed artifact by setting it on fire. Richard, at the end of his rope in life and finances, doused it with gasoline. As he took out a lighter and lit it, he began to feel an intense sharp pain in his chest. His heart started to give out and using every bit of his power to throw the lighter. He landed hard on the ground. Richard died of a heart attack that fateful night. Can a chair really curse anyone who sits in it? Could it really be the reason for the beginning of the fall of Hitler and the end of World War II? Then how can you explain the death of Richard's transport worker who died from unknown causes? Is this case file fake, or do you want to take a seat in this chair and ponder on the truth? Stay tuned to find out which case file is true or fake on Beyond the Files. Let's finally reveal which case file is true or fake. What do you think about Anthony and his disturbing discovery? True or fake? To a basement. Slowly he crept down each stair as the whispers became louder and the lights grew brighter. When he was halfway down he peeked and his heart skipped a beat. A shocking sight of the front desk lady kneeling in front of a small altar. The altar had many lit black candles and a weird black symbol drawing on the wall. There was also a twin size bed and a small kitchen, which Anthony didn't know that she lived on site in the hotel building. Is this inspired by a true story? Not this time. It's simply an urban legend. It's totally fiction. And what about Richard and the chair? True or fake? About the chair, uncovering a chilling truth. The chair had been used by Hitler himself before his fall in World War II. Legend has it that the chair was cursed by gypsies, bringing misfortune and despair to anyone who dared to sit in it. Realizing the gravity of his situation, Richard late at night attempted to rid himself of the cursed artifact. What do you think this time? Can a chair really be cursed? Yes. This case file is inspired by a true story. Again, I showed you how truth and illusion often work side by side. Were you able to separate truth from illusion tonight? Join me next time as we explore more Beyond the Files, I'm your host, Curator M. For more Case file stories and episodes, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. There's always more to explore, more to uncover, and more to challenge our understanding of reality. Join us next time as we venture deeper into Beyond the Files.